Yak Gadget, made in America, based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track monitored accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of our hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the 153anglers.com to place your order today. Based in Santa Ana, California, BioNO Power provides the highest performance lithium ion phosphate batteries for the marine market. These batteries are one quarter the weight of sealed lead acid batteries, provide over 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles, and a 10 plus year service life. These batteries can be used for any deep cycle application, including running fish finders, trolling motors, live wells, and LED lights. For more information, visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W. WER.com or contact dealers nationwide. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. And we're back. Hey, it's another episode of your family friendly show called The Final Cast. What's up, Brad Hicks? What's up, Josh Elders? Not much, man. How's your week been? Uh, pretty good. I had a busy day at work today, but other than yeah. that, yep. Hey, Elgina. Yeah. So, Brian and I are rolling <laughs> without a guest this week. And Brad wanted to talk about some of the things that piqued his interest, as you can see on the, the ticker scrolling at the bottom, that ICAST 2021. And uh, it was good to see ICAST go off this year without a hitch. I think it was without a hitch. I wasn't there. Um, wish we could have went. Um, but maybe someday, maybe someday Brian will grant us permission <laughs> we go to iCast. I think we could have if we wanted to, but oh yeah, I we, think we would have had to pay our own way there. Yeah, so, that, that's the thing that, that holds me back from going. Instead of us mooching off Brian, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, that's that's the thing that holds me back from going. It's just taking off time from wor uh, work to go. That's what yeah. holds you back from doing everything. <laughs> I know I'm poor, dude. I know it's all right. You're not really <laughs> poor. Well, I mean. I I mean I mean, I'm not. You own a house. You have a car. Paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about some of the cool products that came out at ICAST. Um, I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, not really by choice. It was just busy with work and stuff like that. And, you know, I just didn't have a lot of time to follow everybody's uh, post and <laughs> didn't even really... I don't know. Do they showcase stuff from iCast, like on the iCast website during it, or is it just mainly the the people that are there that are sharing their stuff? I, th I everything I saw was just from people sharing it and videos, people going live. Like John yeah. Graves, he went live at a bunch of booths and interviewed people. Yeah, just all that kind of stuff. But uh, just scrolling through Instagram, I saw some stuff too. Like, oh, we released this. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then you know, I just see a bunch of different stuff, and stuff caught my interest. And there was some stuff I was just like, eh. I'm sure we'll get into that too. But it's tough to, for me to follow stuff on Facebook and or Instagram now at this point because as we've done this podcast, you know, for the past couple of years you get more and more friend requests or follows and that sort of thing, man. And it's hard for me to sit down and just start streaming through pages and pages and pages of stuff. Usually I've got like maybe five minutes in and then I'm kind of, I set the phone down and it, it yeah. also has to do with me having two little ones. I don't want to sit there and be on the phone all the time looking at stuff when they're here and yeah, you know, no, I, I, I don't look through Facebook much, but Instagram. I mean, that's, that's Instagram's the same one, the same way though, man. Like, yeah. especially when it comes to fishing stuff, because everybody that I follow on Instagram, it's all fishing related. Yeah. So it's real easy for me to miss stuff. Yep. 
I agree with that. But um, I don't know. I'll start with something that I noticed, and I'm sure you kind of want to talk about it, and uh, especially because you're a bona fide guy. Uh, the first thing that I saw something from, uh, not sure if it piqued my interest um, as much as uh, we could have been like, yeah, we saw that one coming. Was the uh, P127 from Bonafide, which is going is it? That's what it's called, right? P127. Yep. yep. Um, and that's the um, pedal, new pedal kayak coming out from Bonafide. And uh, I wanted to see your take, Brad. Um, I kind of quickly watched a couple <clears throat> videos on it. Is it basically just the SS127 with a drive popped in, or did they? redesign anything is there a new hull design since it's going to be a, a pedal platform because i know some some kayak companies you know as they've released pedal drives and or made improvements they've made adjustments to the holes like yeah. i think uh, when hobie did the 360 that hull design is slightly different than uh the standard 180 drives yeah standard they one. yeah uh th they from the very beginning people have wanted like the uh uh, like a aftermarket pedal that you could install on the 127, but they have repeatedly said over and over that they can't do that because the hull wasn't designed for it. There's not mm -hmm. enough plastic in the dry pot area to support a pedal support. drive. Yeah. So <clears throat> they had to redesign the whole, uh, the whole uh, hull of the kayak around the uh, native propel drive. So when they got, or when they merged with native, they had that pedal drive. They didn't want to, like create, you know, some kind of whole new different design just to get a pedal drive in one of their kayaks. So, I mean, it saves them money. Right. Right. So, um, the and, whole, and also, the, the good thing about that too, is where you see the issues with the Jackson FD drive and the Hobie 360 drive, you know, where you've got breaks and stuff happening and, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, I'm not, not trying to beat a, dead horse with this we've talked about it a billion times on this episode and within friends and stuff like that and, you know those drives they'll, they'll take they'll take a while to get the, all their kinks worked out you know mm -hmm. um but i think bonafide um as much as um, as how many people out there aren't giant fans of the native drive um i don't have any experience with it um but like it's kind of a smart move. You're like, all right, well, here's a drive system. that has been out for some time now. And, you know, instead of us completely making a, a different drive system for the bonafides, let's just pop that one in there, you know, and then they can just improve upon that drive as they keep going. Yeah. Which from the, I tried Justin's uh, Slayer Max last year. It had the Propel. I think it's one of the newer drives in it. I can't remember. I liked it. I thought it was pretty fast. I know Dan, the reason why he didn't like native was because the drives, he said they were too slow and I don't know. I just don't see it. I could pedal that thing four miles an hour, you know, just yeah. cruising. It didn't feel like I was putting any effort into it, but um, they did have to design the hull. So it is completely different hull. It's not a 127 at all other than like the cathedral sh tri hull shape. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's completely redesigned. You see where a lot of people were saying that they had a lot of issues with the uh, steering mechanism on uh, native uh, water mm -hmm. allowing to get into the hull that way. The way they designed on the P127 is they, they raised it up and have it on a slant, I think, slightly. So if water does get in that little groove, it's not going to go in the hull. It's going to flow right out of the channels into the yeah. rear tank well. So. I don't know, man. I'm excited for it. I want to, tr well, I, 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 like I said, I've tried the drive before, so I know what to expect, but I want to stand in that hole and try it with the pedal drive. Yeah. Because they're saying that the new hull is way more stable than the 127, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, from what I understand, I've never fished out of the Bonafide, but um, from what I understand, that hull design is pretty rock solid and, you know, it, it was always a cool design because it allowed for that that boat to be narrow, you know, not like really wide. Um, and so, like, it'll be interesting to see. Do you know what the dimensions are on it? I mean, obviously, 12, 12 7 length, but you yeah. know what the width is? Yeah, 34 inches wide. So it's pretty similar to the 127. 
but yeah, the, the, the gunnels are like higher. The, oh, is it? Yeah. So you got it. it look, it, a lot of people are saying it's a Slayer Max with a bonafide name on it, which I mean, it has similar characteristics like the gunnels being higher, but mm -hmm. you can tell it's a bonafide hole. You yeah. know what I mean? Just by looking at it, you're like, that's not a Slayer Max. That's definitely bonafide. Yeah. I mean, when I look at the boat, I see bonafide before I see Slayer, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that came out. So um, yeah, dude, it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see the maneuverability on it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you catch any videos or anybody demoing it or anything like that? They actually didn't do demo because they're not done with all their production on the uh, uh, pieces. I, I, I think or something like that. I, I can't remember. So they, they didn't participate in, de in the demos, so they didn't have demos out there. But I have watched the release video, and I've seen like a video from some guy named Trevor Soherty. I can't pronounce his last name, but they got some cool shots of it. It looks cool. Cool. It'll be interesting to see what it can do in the water. Uh, did you see what the anticipated release date is? I, I'm assuming it's going to be the fall <laughs> this year. Yeah, it's in October. Yeah, so it's going to be technically a 2022 boat. Yeah, I bet I was talking to Mark, and uh, I think he's going to order some. So I'm excited to see one in person. And speaking you know what of, was really crazy though. <laughs> this killed me. Was the number of people complaining about the price point being at 29.99? Yeah, they were like, "Oh, we were we were anticipating it'd be lower than that." I'm like, "Really?" Out of all the kayak companies that are out there and all the expensive ones, you've got the five thousand dollar Hobie 360, the mm -hmm. close to four thousand dollar Jackson Big Rig FD. You've got you know the other ones that are happening, and Bonafide is a a decently priced boat for the SS 127. It's not a cheap kayak. That 29.99 was like this big sticker shock for people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and and the native native Slayer Max is 2600 or 2699 or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a few more 100 100 more bucks. I did I mean, the bonafide seat has always been one of the highlights of that kayak. And, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's up there with the Hobie Vantage seat and, you know, some of the other other ones like the new canoe seat. Um, but I, I, I was just like the new canoe seat. You don't? <laughs> no. Well, I've never sat in one, but I'm a huge fan of like 360 seats. Like, yeah, I wish every kayak had a, had one in it. You know, um, I just I think it's such an awesome idea. And with as stable as those kayaks are getting and as big as they're getting, like, I don't understand how it's not being engineered more. You know, yeah. it's like well, it's new canoe and wilderness systems. Are they the other ones that have one? I don't know if Wilderness Systems does, but I know Feel Free just released the new pedal drive too that does it. I does think. it? Yeah, it's the the one that has the lightning on it or something. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Everybody was making fun of that design, which I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, that, dude, I don't. Somebody made a comment about this, and they were right. It's like the kayak fishing community gets super critical mm -hmm. on new products, man. Like. Somebody was saying something that they were disappointed. Oh, yeah, they were disappointed in Hobie because yeah. of the, the Ike version that came out. <clears throat> Yet Hobie has just started. Jay just released the, what is it, the Lynx? Is that what mm -hmm. it's called? Yeah. Um, and then they've got, did they do an upgrade to their inflatable line? I, I think? think maybe. I don't know. Or and maybe it was the iTrack. Yeah, but anyways, it's kind of like, you know, like they released – I mean, I think Hobie could have maybe waited to release that boat and for iCast, but somebody was saying something like, you have an entire year to come up with something new that's innovative, like, you know, like complain, <laughs> and this is what you guys come up with. And I'm like, they just came out with the 360. Will you guys yeah. like, slow your roll? There's not going to be some – super new craziness that you know is gonna happen every year from these companies i mean we didn't hear i didn't hear anything from jackson yeah i didn't either still have yet to say anything um you know and that's fine and you know i don't expect it every year you know i don't either 
Um, well, especially after a year like we went through last year, like no, everybody's not working and stuff, so they're not preparing. And for this. and like say something like <clears throat> we were talking about. We'll get into it in a little bit with like <clears throat> Shimano, Shimano reels. Okay, they're not redesigning a whole new reel most of the time. Mm-hmm. You might see a new one every couple of years or a completely new reel, but nine times out of 10, all you're seeing them do is tweak some little things within an existing platform and either making it better or actually downgrading something to make something more price point friendly. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they might take a Shimano, say Corrado, take some of the fancy bearings out or something, you know, adjust a couple little things here and there and then be like, okay, we're selling this for $99 and we're going to call it this. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the same thing you see with lose, you know, like how many different versions of lose reels are there? And you're like, man, these are all real similar, but there's like some little things that are a little bit different in each one that raises that price point. And then they just slap a different name on it. You know, yeah, that, they're like it's the tournament one, or here's the speed spool, or here's the laser pro, or you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like the uh Shimano uh, uh SLX and then the SLX DC, they throw the chip in and it's hundred dollars more, right? Exactly, <clears throat> it's, it's not really innovative. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now I did watch the video that Chad Hoover did, I don't know if you caught this. Um, he says uh, game changer like 6,000 times. I hate the word game changer at this point. Like, it's so stupid. Like, when Armando and I did the podcast, he's like, you would talk about game changers. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I try. I try not to use that word because it gets thrown yeah. around a lot. Well, and that and it, it's a grind. Yeah. <laughs> everything, everything in fishing is a grind. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what's a grind when you're working 12 hours and you're covered in oil and you smell <laughs> like dog shit. And that's a grind. Going yeah. fishing is not a grind. Um, yeah. It might suck sometimes, <clears throat> but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, I'm, a, I'm a guilty of saying that, though. Yeah. yeah. I grinded it out today. Got my <laughs> limit. Grinded out that limit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to get real unpopular with this, but I just, it's just overused. That's all. Like I I understand where it comes from. I understand where game changer comes from, but um, Chad Hoover was talking about a lot of people dogging about the Hobie links and he made a point about what Hobie's doing and why he found it to be such a game changer. And that was that they uh, made that thermo form and they, they have a foam core also, and they're doing trying to go lighter mm-hmm. and a little bit more cost effective, <clears throat> and this allows them to be able to make kayaks within the crappy supply chain issues that we're having, mm-hmm. and it's lighter. And so it's kind of reverting back to something that used to be done, like by Pelican and you know those other brands. He just kind of highlights that, um, and basically tells everybody to shut their mouths and listen to him. It's, it's a hilarious video, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen more posts about that because I haven't seen that video yet. Somebody bashing him, like, look at him, you know? Yeah. yeah but I like Chad. I, think he's I mean, uh, dude, I'm, I'm really kind of getting indifferent to all of it, just in general. It's yeah. kind of – I'm just kind of – I don't know, over it, I guess. I'm over the drama of it. I'm over the conflicts and the opinions of everybody. It's like, you know, it is what it is. And it's the internet. You know, it gives everybody that platform to talk all the crap they want without any consequences, really. So, yeah, it's always going to be there. It's going to be, it's not just kayak fishing. It's everything in life in general, so. If it's not kayak fishing, we're complaining about it's the president. If it's not the president, it's COVID. If it's not COVID, it's taxes. If it's not taxes, you know, the list goes on and on. The NBA, the NFL. Right. Or Stop. Brad Hicks. Like, yeah, everybody right. around here hates me. I don't even care. <laughs> but um, so, you know, that, that was something that kind of caught my eye was that video um, that he did kind of based off of talking about it at cast because he i think he did an interview with aj mm. so uh dude we've been talking about the same thing for almost 20 minutes already i'm sorry it's all good you you uh mentioned the new hobie uh ike 
edition. So I wanted to hear what you thought about that. I know you saw it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are complaining about it. Yeah. Um, but I don't understand the complaint um, because – what you just did is you bridged the gap that we've all been complaining about between the boat world mm -hmm. and the kayak world, as far as the whole tournament, especially with the tournament scene. Um, you know, a lot of kayak fishermen in the industry are like always talking about that we're overlooked and that we've got some of the top elite anglers in the world and, you know, whatever. And the thing is, is it, you if you want to bring dollars to kayak fishing you have to find some seriously marketable people yep and i agree my, my probably super unpopular opinion there has not been one of those people yet yeah. um you know uh it's and for hobie it was an easy decision because ike has been and a Hobie for a few years now. Yeah. He's fished these tournaments. I'm sure he's worked with them behind the scenes on stuff. I mean, he's got Hobie on his truck. You know, he travels with his bass boat and is uh, connected to his giant truck with a Hobie on top sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so really, it's a great idea. Um, I, I agree. I thought it was a great idea. You know, and I like – you know, as far as the tea thing, that's that's Ike. He's that's his little thing. That's his yeah. shark thing, shark logo. You can take those off though. I heard that's a sticker package. I'm sure it is. No. And that's um, the thing I didn't like about it. I was like, yeah, it's too cheesy. But that's that's Ike though. Yeah, I, I agree. But here's the thing: it's not yeah. cheesy. We looked at what Bonafide did with some of their crazy color scheme things. That I was agree. cheesy. That was and it, cheesy. <laughs> and but yet it was kind of cool looking when you got a you got to, when I saw like the Black Widow in person yeah. and the Venom and I saw you know the the what it was it the B one whatever what was it the uh, the bomber yeah, the one bomber yeah did it, it maybe it was a little gimmicky but it still looked pretty sweet and in person. Yeah. There was some cool attention to detail that was done on those kayaks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back in the day, Jackson used to do kind of special ed edition kayaks. They did a yak attack version. You remember mm -hmm. the orange and yep. gray uh, Kusa? And I think they did one with, I don't want to say the big rig. Uh, I, it was very limited, uh, but I remember seeing it on the OG Kusa. Um, the lightning thing for Feel Free. Um, mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. Hobie was the only one I hadn't seen that touched that weird kind of special ed edition type thing yet. Right. So it was yeah. really only a matter of time in my opinion. That's um, true. Um, but you know, like I'm not a fan of red personally, but I know a ton of people who love red kayaks mm -hmm. and the red and black kind of camo swirl, whatever you want to call it looks good. Yeah. You know? It looks sweet. I like that color. Way. So, um, I wish they would, I, I wish they would have done another color. Um, I, I mean, personally, the way I am with kayaks, I, I think the more color options, the better. Yeah. Um, but I know what goes into the manufacturing of these and it's very hard to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to have a lot of color choices. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw what Jackson used to do and how many different things they had for a long time and you could do custom colors, but the mm -hmm. fact that it takes like 10 kayaks to get one kayak, right. When you're doing that, it's just, it's just insanity. When you think it's not cost effective whatsoever for the slight price increase that it was, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it was like two or $300 and you're like, well, that doesn't justify I had to make, you know, five to 10 kayaks till I got that color to bleed the way it's supposed to, you know? Yeah. I um, agree. But I don't know. Overall, um, you know, it didn't bother me. Um, obviously, it wasn't super innovative or anything by that means. But mm -hmm. like I said before, it doesn't have to be every year. I don't know why it's expected to be that way every year. Um, you know, it's uh, that, that 360 drive just came out. And from what I understand, that 360 drive took years to get engineered. You yeah, that blows, that blows my mind. Like, they kept that under wraps for that long. Yeah. Blows my but, mind. But it's funny we're talking about this because Jake Harshman mentioned on a 
Armando showed uh, that just released today, Wednesday. Uh, he said these the 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 limited edition Hobie kayak wasn't marketed for the tournament anglers like us or the kayak anglers like us. It was made for those bass boat guys to get into the sport. Um, we're not going to go like me and you, we're not going to go out of our way to get a boat that has Ike's name on it. That's just, no. you know, and it, that goes with, that goes for like, if they would have picked a kayak angler instead of Ike to put on that boat, you know what I mean? Like I, mm -hmm. if it was a Jody queen, like boat, I probably wouldn't buy it, you know? No, no, I wouldn't have like, it mm -hmm. wouldn't matter whose name is on it. Um, yeah. um it's just, I, you know that, but I mean, the kayak itself, Cool looking kayak, you know, the I shark agree. thing, that's Ike's thing. So like, uh, yeah, it all makes sense to me. Um, is it piquing my interest in buying one? No. Um, but, you know, it may pique somebody else's interest, whether it is bass boat guys, or maybe there is some tournament guys out there that are like, hey, I'll do a Nike boat. Yeah, I like the red. I, you know, I like, I know a lot of guys who put those shark teeth things on their kayaks, you yeah. know? Um, yep. I think I, Grimsley Grimsley put it on. I think he put it on his Hobie. Uh, his kids bought him one. You know the the uh, fighter pilot. You know thing. Mm -hmm. It's what it is. You know it's kind of based off of this um, that old uh, World War II stuff. So yep. the nose art and um, so like it doesn't overall really kind of surprise me. But you know there's I'm sure there's a market out of there. You know. Um, you know, if if I was if I was Hobie, I probably wouldn't make a ton of them, um, just because you know it's like, hey, let's uh, maybe limited run these, not mm -hmm. limited run, but like let's have a limited production, see how they s sell, and if they sell great, we can make some more, you know, and yeah, that Which, sort of thing. But I, I I saw the other day somebody already had one. They posted in the Hobie group. Yeah, I'm like, sure some guys who are close to Hobie could have gotten them on gotten, you know, I, I like, know some of the I'm shots fast. got, they got them like quick. I think, I think they were probably there. I bet you some of the shops were aware of that coming out, had them on. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you after, <laughs> but, um, so it's, um, you know, it is what it is, man. And it's, I, I, some, uh, an extremely marketable person, you know, like, yeah, that's the thing is, is with tournament anglers and you see this in the bass boat world. Um, it's not the guys who are making money and who are marketable bass. Bass fishing is not a moneymaker for tournaments. Mm -hmm. Um, if you win some tournaments and then you happen to be marketable and, uh, you have a good look about you and you have a, a big personality and you're a, you know, a good person, like in regards to the way you speak and the, you know, what you convey and your knowledge and fishing and the way you share it. And, you know, you're doing videos. That's why Ike, Ike is who he is. Mm -hmm. That's why he gets paid big dollars. He gets paid big dollars by sponsors. These guys don't make that much money from winning tournaments, you know, um, in, unless you're Jacob Wheeler or something. Then over yeah. the course, course of your career, you make $3 million. <laughs> right. Right. But you got to think about though, like, Okay, you he makes three million dollars, but how much is how much is Ike making off Berkeley and you know yeah. Hobie and you know Abu Garcia and that kind of stuff? You know what I mean? That's where mm -hmm. that money really truly lies, and that's why I see that crossover of Hobie bringing Ike and Ellie over and you know making that special edition because there's really I don't I don't see anybody in the kayak game that would have been marketable like that. Yeah. Um, that's We're just gonna... my personal opinion. Not that I don't think that there's marketable people in the kayak industry. Um, I just don't think that we're there yet. And, yeah, we're not. You know, and I don't know that we can, that we'll ever get there. There's a certain allure about the bass boat world and what really opened it up, I think, is YouTube. And when the Guggen Squad started doing YouTube – and the cool video and drone shots you started to see in the bass boat world. And Scott Martin dropped on the board and he's got his, and these guys are getting good editors and they did the Guggen squad thing and it just blew up. And there's this yeah. certain allure about getting in a big old bass boat early morning and just 
hauling ass to your spots and it just looks good visually. You know, it looks like the commercials we were been watching since we started watching fishing. Yep. Um, and so kayaks <laughs> don't look that cool in a drone <laughs> shot. I mean, it nah. looks cool like visually, but like following the boat while it's doing 50 with a drone, just if we we're doing 2.5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know what you mean. I you know agree. what I mean? Like it's just, <laughs> I don't even I don't watch much kayak fishing videos on YouTube. Honestly, I'm just, I love fit kayak fishing. I just don't care to watch it. Yeah. It's just me. But I mean, I, I watch Greg Blanchard. <clears throat> um, I still watch some uh, Matt Nelson videos, um, you know, but. Well, I watch him just because of the small mouth. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's, it's um it's uh yeah he's a very flat flat person you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. like when he talks like it's kind of but i think the reason from what i understand how he does that is i don't think that he records his audio through his camera i think he records it um through like a digital recorder and so his vi his voice is cut into the video yeah. or edited into the video. And that's why he actually sounds so clear. Sorry, my nose is running, dude. I was sniffing a bunch of dust at work today. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, it's just that's until we get that, that marketability, you know, like um, it's just it. it it made sense, you know, like I was thinking, I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised with Ike and Ellie that it didn't happen sooner. You know? Yeah. And more stuff like this is going to happen. I think more pros are going to start coming over to kayaks like that. Yeah, so. we'll see. I mean, the thing is, though, is it, is it worth it to them? You know what I mean? Right. Like, right yeah. Like I, Ike and Ellie's had a partnership with Hobie for, like I said, for a couple of years now. And, he comes over and fishes it and he supports it. And it's really cool that he does, you know, I um, wish he would fish more of them. I think it's cool when he jumps in. Yeah. I mean, because everybody, it gets dude, everybody hyped. You that know dude I mean? is busy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, oh yeah. It he gets everybody up. hyped though. They're like, Oh, I want to be Ike. Yeah. Yeah. Gets them all pumped up. I like it. It's cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dude, we can move on to the next thing I saw. And I'm actually going to share a video here because, uh, this is where I saw it. So if you're watching on YouTube, check this out. So weird. Look, <laughs> uh, Oh, so, I thought it had something in it that was making it do that. And I realized it's the line. So what do you think about that? It's a good idea, really. Um, yeah. I, but the thing is, is I'd be interested in see how it actually does that underwater. Because what mm -hmm. something does out of water versus in water, are like two different things, in my opinion. I mean, colors are different looking. You yeah. know what I mean? Like what appears to be chartreuse can look totally different in the water at times, you know? Yeah, um, especially at the depths. Oh gosh, what was that thing? <laughs> it was all right. So this oh, is, I, came, I came in. Whoa, I came wait, in wait, at whoa, an odd, whoa. odd spot. Hold on a second. <laughs> we just found out we have a spy. Somebody <laughs> spying on our podcast. I just finished up the new canoe show, and like I was like, oh, they're talking about iCast. I wonder what they're talking about. And then I see like this plastic thing all balled <laughs> up, and you're like, does that work underwater too? And I was like, what the hell were you looking at? <laughs> So uh, it's a company called Lawless Custom Lures that I saw somebody shared on Facebook. And uh, it looks like the line runs through something in the tail. And then like the way you, the way you get a hook set, it turns the hook 180 degrees in the fish's mouth. And oh, they're not cool. supposed to, they're not supposed to come undone or something. It's weird. It just caught my interest. I was like, that's interesting. I haven't seen anything like that. That is kind of cool. I yeah, didn't even like see the that. The line either. travels th from the head of the jig or whatever through the tail section, and it gives it that weird popping. Now, it's is like that a curling? 
Now, is it, is it supposed to do that and that's supposed to help with the hook set or is it because the way it looked, it looked cool. Like it gave the lure like an, a really neat action. Yeah. Like I, I thought it was for both like that for the action and the hook set, but I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting concept for sure. Yeah. Did you guys talk about Z-Man stuff yet? No. Nope. But it's on the list and we can talk about it right now. We've been uh, talking about Hobie with the Bonafide. Ike series, Bonafide. Um, I've been going on rants <laughs> for like 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, the, if you haven't touched on New Canoe, man, uh, the one thing cool that they came out, like they just released some accessories, but the one accessory that I think that will be able to be used in multiple different boats is the uh, transducer retract kit. Like, I don't know if you guys saw that. I just oh. finished up, up the new canoe show. And, uh, um, I was talking to the guy that designed it and in, in our boat designer and he designed that thing. And it's, it's pretty slick, man. I know Chad Hoover put out a video, uh, showing that. And then also, uh, new canoe, when we were in the booth, we put out a couple videos showing it off. And things like that, man. I think the one thing um, that, uh, you know, I think be utilizing different boats, no matter what boat you you uh, fish out of. You know, because I know Hobie's got that retract kit, but I mm -hmm. that the one that we designed, it just goes through the scupper hole. So, like, Bonafide has an area for the, the transducer to, to raise up into the hull of the boat. Same thing with Old Town and things like that. So... Uh, that was something cool uh, that you guys... That's definitely a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, new that... canoe, uh, so the new canoe runs through the scupper hole? Is that what you're... Yeah, because on the on the new Unlimited, um, they, they made a cavity um, underneath oh, yeah. the one front center uh, scupper hole. <clears throat> so, and, and this was in mind when they did that, the retract kit. Um, but it'll pull that thing up so that there's a little rope that comes out of there mm -hmm. and on the unlimited there's a cleat a spot for a cleat to mount right there so when you have it pulled up you can put the rope right in the cleat oh, or you can just idea. drop it down it's it's really slick concept you know i know i'm a new canoe guy but literally when i saw it in person and i i saw it a few months ago because uh matt gibson was prototyping it but it could literally go in any of those boats yeah. um it just That's what makes it cool yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that was the one thing that kind of blew my mind. And I know uh, Hoover said the same thing in his video that he put up that I saw um, talking about it. He's like, man, he's like, out of all these years, why didn't we think about that? We all have these goofy arms hanging off the side yeah. of our boats and <laughs> things like that. You know, whereas this, you can just pop it right up and bam, you're good to go. And then, it, you know, it's going to depend on the boat, but like in the new unlimited, we got those deep drainage channels. Mm -hmm. So the transducer cord can run through that. Now on some of the oh, other boats, yeah. if you don't have that channel, the cord may be up there visible, but like, uh, you know, in the 127, uh, I think you could run it up through the pod or something like that. I don't know, but, um, inter interesting boat thing, but Z man real quick. Um, I saw the new chatterbaits, the big blade, and then the tiny one. Yeah. Those look badass. Uh, I was actually talking to Drew Gregory in the booth, and he was showing them to me. And then uh, the one other thing that he showed me was uh, the new swim bait with the hook already in it. Um, oh, yeah. So it's like a big that. body uh, plastic swim bait. Comes with a big hook already rigged in it. That was super sexy as well. And then they got a like a paddle tail worm. It's like a six inch, six inch. Yeah, I think it was six inch paddle tail worm. And I think he said they were going to have a couple different sizes. But I'm thinking about running that on a shaky head, you know, because oh, they had yeah. the tech floats. Yeah. And it's got this tiny little paddle tail or cut tail. Um, actually, I think they had both or something. Um, but I can see that, man, that tail sticking up and just wagging back and forth as you're dragging it along the bottom. Yeah, but, uh, that was super yeah. cool. The uh, chatter baits is what caught my interest. I, I I like the big blade chatter bait, and I like the really small one. And the really small one, I think, is going to be great on those tough days. Yeah, when they're not chasing bigger moving baits and they're chasing you know smaller profiles, 
or if you're in that situation where like your bait in that lake or body of water isn't that big or you have a lot of like fresh spawn like you know minnows or whatever it may be running around in their shad small shad spawn or something mm -hmm. i think that's going to be perfect dude it'll be good for the river too because yeah. the river, one of the craziest little bait fish that you see in the river those tiny little yep. silver ones flashing when they jump and yep. you know you're kind of always like man like you want to throw like a small kayak or whatever, but you're like, the water is dirty. So are they really going to see it? You know, that's why I throw the little uh, big Joshy swim bait. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, still though, you, that chatter bait though, like a chatter bait, that that's awesome. I used to throw a chatter bait in the river, the original one all the mm -hmm. time. And I would catch smallmouth occasionally on it, but I hated that thing at the same time. So yeah. um, my question though, about the small blade, is, is it still like a, re a regular profile? with a small blade yeah yeah it's like okay. the regular profile oh, okay. well no 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 the small blade is is small and then it's it's actually a smaller skirted and smaller hook okay so i think there's the mini and the micro the micro is small dude it's like the size of a ned rig oh really and then, and then the, micro, yeah. the micro is a little bit bigger um so yeah, I could see you putting like a, a small plastic on the back of that. Mm -hmm. And and not only that, but I could see like crappie hitting that perch, you know, some of the smaller pan fishing things. Yeah. Um, but super cool, man. I was super stoked about that. The big blade, like that blade is huge. So it's gonna put a <laughs> big thump. Like it's it's the normal like chatterbait size, but the blade yeah. is like legitimately legitimately like twice the size of a normal blade it I, is I heard big. it was 70 percent bigger than the what normal. yeah 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 it is, is it really yeah the blade I was thinking is it'd be huge. like a quarter or 30 percent bigger 70 <laughs> no, percent bigger like yeah that's what i read today almost, <laughs> yeah it's almost <laughs> twice the size of a normal <laughs> of a normal chatterbait blade it is it is pretty stout. The fish man. goes up to bite it, the blade just slaps yeah. it across the Here. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's big, man. It is big. Yeah, Z Man said it was 70% bigger on their Instagram yeah. today. I believe it. I thought it was closer to like double the size, but yeah, yeah. that would make sense. Like 70%. It is big, dude. It's gonna put a heavy thump in the water. You try to fish it through grass. You're like, did I just cut down? Kind of tails like <laughs> Jeez. should have nicknamed it the lawnmower <laughs> that, that that'll be a good uh bait to use when it's like super muddy and stuff oh yeah yeah yeah. when them fish can't see nothing yeah for yeah. sure didn't you just come by and slap them with a piece of metal <laughs> <laughs> they float float to the top yeah. like dead fish on the surface how's that All sliced up what was that <laughs> that's funny oh that's great that's great <laughs> so uh I cast, they announced the winner of uh, best of the show product, which was the Berkeley Gilly. Yeah. Uh, you saw that, Josh, or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike uh, McKinstry <clears throat> yep. is a oh, Berkeley yeah. guy, right? Isn't he yep. a Berkeley guy anyways? Um, yep. He was the first video I saw about it. And then I saw some other stuff. A lot of people had, uh, that was probably one of the mo more positive ones that I saw. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of negativity from my cast on our <laughs> yeah. end, Brian. Like, and like. It was just every everything that came out just got bashed. Like, um, yeah. but uh, I like baits like that. Um, I don't throw it very often, but I used to buy the um, the little bluegill from Savage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so like, but that's Brad. I used to throw those all the time over at uh, Kaiser, where the grass was real crazy. Yeah. It's just it's not the best bait to throw in that situation. Mm -hmm. But if you can find like a good hard grass line, um, that bait's kind of get like a good bait to throw. You just got to kind of keep it out of the grass. It's not very you know weed friendly by any means. But I was excited to see it. Um, I haven't seen any performance stuff on it, um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I always like when you see kind of baits like that. Um, come out from um, some of the manufacturers that you know will probably have like a, a good like price point on it where it's like it's not like something that's super custom and you're like oh here's a thirty dollar swim bait you know or whatever and you got you get one of them you know yeah. I like I like those kind of baits sometimes that come in like you know uh, you get like you know three or four in a package or whatever for you know whatever price point so but. right yeah it was cool man I saw it at the show. Um, 
I like how it was so realistic for a plastic, like color wise, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and, you know, watching guys uh, like tactical bass and talking about throwing those like little bluegill swim baits during the spawn and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, they could be super, super effective, which uh, I think that's where you're going to really see that thing shine or right after, oh, yeah. uh, right after a bluegill spawn and, you know, bass are up chasing, chasing those little bluegills in the shallows, things like that, man. Um, yeah, it was, it was a super cool bait. Um, I did walk through the Berkeley booth a little bit and, uh, I did see that and it is, uh, it's a pretty cool little bait. Did you see it like a, a underwater or anything like that? Uh, to be honest, no. Um, the only thing I did see underwater that, uh, we just talked about was that cut tail or the paddle tail worm, uh, mm -hmm. by Z man. And that was super cool. Um, and I was telling Drew, I'm like, Ooh, that's my next shaky head killer. Um, but, uh, there was, uh, Oh, the new football heads, uh, for yeah. the TRDs. Um, I did see that they had a little tank, you know, with the ice rods and you could see the motion. That was super cool too. Um, I did see the action of that, um, which is kind of nice because, especially on the trd crawl which i like throwing a lot of it kind of angles that back and gives it more of a realistic mm -hmm. approach rather than standing straight up like a normal trd head would um so that was kind of cool as well um i did see those the, yeah i saw them re they released those a couple weeks before i cast and uh it caught my eye i was like man i, I really wish they would make a three-quarter ounce version of that though just I, I'm not a big jig guy. I can't catch fish on jigs for some reason. So like that with like a crawl on it, I, I would catch fish. No problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's uh, it's, you know, you're seeing a lot of that, like a lot of the big shaky heads and stuff, guys are actually throwing on like crayfish and things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I could definitely see that, you know, even, um, uh, secret lures they're using their, tube style jig head and they made a hollow body um craw that looks like a craw but you can use that tube tube head on it and rig it weedless so it's kind of sitting that same way mm -hmm. um that's something super slick that i've seen recently and that just came out um that wasn't released at icast that was released i think like a month or two ago um mm -hmm. but i think you're seeing more of that you know um giving guys their option that maybe don't throw jigs or something along that, those lines, you know? Yeah. Um, I like guys it. using those different heads for sure. Yeah. So. Good ideas, man. Like, like I, I think out of everything that I saw come out of ICAST, it, the lures is probably the best things I've seen for sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny, yeah. man. I didn't spend a ton of time in those booths. Um, I, I was busy doing other things, but, um, there was some cool stuff that I saw in, in the actual lures booth. And there was, uh, the other cool thing I saw, I didn't mean to crash your guys' show, so I'll finish up with this. Um, I walked into the quantum booth and, uh, I was going to ask you about this. <laughs> yeah. I post, I posted the video on the, the Facebook page and there was a comment like, Oh, that's going to be copycatted a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, but I was talking to the dude that does, uh, all the testing stuff for quantum, uh, in their factories. And, uh, we were talking about the smoke reels and he's like, Oh, did you see the rods and the, the magnetic holders on them? And I was like, what? What, what did you guys do and he's like oh yeah come check this out so he's like you know the biggest problem when you're using something with like a bunch of treble hooks or something like that hooks always flopping around getting caught on other lines on other rods getting caught in the carpet things like that he's like check this out and they had a crankbait tied on and um they put a magnet inside the rod so the hooks mm -hmm. will stick to that magnet up against the rod and i was shaking that rod pretty good dude i yeah. was like literally putting it to the test because i'm like no way it's gonna come loose and i'm like flopping the rod <laughs> around the booth and the guy's like see i told you it's not coming off which was cool like i think i got it to come off but i was like really flopping that thing yeah. around but i was like dude this is so clutch like you got rods in your truck going down the road or in the bed of your truck 
uh, in your rod box, in the box in your, uh, you know, your boat or, you know, flopping around in the back of the kayak, things like that. Like anything that's got more than one hook, cause there's a normal hook keeper, but the magnet is just above that. So, mm-hmm. you know, depending on the size of the bait, it's, it's, it's in there and in that yeah. whatever extra hook is in there is going to stick to it. Um, that was super clever and something I was like, why didn't they think of this a long time ago? Yeah. You know? Well, um, you know what I'm thinking of though, and this goes back to your doomsday um, yeah, episode yeah, yeah. is how does that mess with the balance and sensitivity and durability of a rod? Yeah. You know what I mean? So did so, you, were you, did you get any info yeah, about that? Yeah. So um, it, I think it's the smoke series rods. I, I could be wrong on what series what the name of the series of the rod is um but i did hold the rod with their reel and it was felt super balanced um it didn't feel like it was off weight and i even picked up a rod that didn't have the reel on it and it was the rod was still balanced by itself um you know what it does as far as performance i think because it's so far down and close to the reel seat it's yeah. not really going to, it's not in the bend of the rod. Right. Um, so it shouldn't affect it. I, I was more concerned about the balance of it. Yeah. And uh, overall, I mean, it felt super balanced to me and, and it didn't add any weight to the rod. Cause he was like, here, here's one with it. Here's one without it. I couldn't tell the difference. I mean, it's yeah. small and it's, it's not like it's super heavy. So um, I thought that was something something cool that i saw too so yeah i liked when i saw you, you posted i was like that is a good idea um, yeah. the it's thing pretty... the thing that i'm curious about is like could, could you use it with a drop shot weight because i never uh, know where to put the weight with a drop shot <laughs> so that that's funny you mentioned that because i kind of thought about that on the way home as i was kind of taking everything in oh i should say on the way to minnesota as i was kind of taking everything in from icast on the plane ride and i had thought about that too because i never know what to do with the drop shot weight like i always take the extra line and wrap it around my (laughs) rod like behind the reel and then it always comes undone anyways yeah um that's a good question man i'm 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 curious on that um let's just say Let's just say this. uh, Quantum's probably going to be on a future podcast. Heck yeah. That's, that'd be a sweet podcast. So whether it's on your show or ours, um, it's, it's happening. So save that question. (laughs) Dan Dan Perry, he'll want to get on that. He's a, he's a quantum guy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, super interesting, man. Some of the stuff they had and like they had these big display cases and um, it showed the reels reels mounted on like just a reel seat and then they have a a machine turning the crank and then pushing the button down and then turning the crank and pushing the button down and turning the crank they do the button push a million times and then the cranks is like twice that or something and that's how they test their reels so that was kind of cool too to Hmm. see like how they do that he's like these are normally set up in the factory you could see the number counters and then they even had like a TV screen plugged into that with all that listed on there. And it was like hundreds of thousands. And I was like just sitting there watching it. It was like a kid watching like, you know, like the coin push machines, yeah. you know, where you drop a quarter in and you're like hoping it pushes them over the edge. Like, that's what it was like. It was just like sitting there watching like, all right, is it going to break this time? Yeah, is it going to break this time? (laughs) That's awesome. But that's that. I guess that's what they do um, to test their stuff, like as they prototype it and they come out with it and stuff like that. And then as they go through um, making the reels, they'll pull a random one off and test it to make sure nothing's changed in the manufacturing process, like you know things like that. They continually test them as they're making them which is Mm. super cool but i forget what he told me like how long it takes for that machine to do like the million count cycle um it was something like a week or something like that like it's just consistent going like i said and they do it with the spinning rails too so flip the bail open and then pop it closed and then they'll reel it you know flip the bail open flop it closed it's it's pretty cool what they do to test that stuff. So, so. so we're we're getting reels that are used 
a thousand or a million times. No, 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 no. <laughs> those, those are discarded, but oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I I think what he said is it's got so the reels has a five year warranty. I think he said, and they figure it's a million cycles in that five years for a pretty avid fisherman. Um, so that's why they do that that uh, number of cycles. Gotcha. He's like they've gone way over that. I forget. I think he said that they uh, they pushed one to see how far it would go before it ran out, and it was something ridiculous. But he's like, huh. you know, we figured with that one million mark, that's about what an average angler does in five years, and we want to make sure we meet our standards on that. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Didn't we'll know they did that. that. Look forward to that, boys. So, any other questions I can answer for you before I leave your presence? <laughs> no. Well, there there's one other product before we. Well, not it's a group of products, but uh, I don't know if you went through the stick booth around, around, dude. Yeah, just yeah, you can stick around. <laughs> uh, a group of products that interest me because everybody knows that I love Shimano because I keep saying it. <laughs> they released a bunch of new reels, a bunch of rods. And uh, I want to talk about this jerk bait because I don't know if you saw it in person or not. Uh, I briefly walked through there. There. Yes. I br briefly walked through their booth. I looked at it, a couple of the reels, um, but uh, I didn't really dive deep into Shimano. Um, I did see a couple of those sitting up <clears> on the <throat> counter, um, but I didn't talk, talk to anybody about them and I didn't investigate them as much. Okay. Um, I walked through the Daiwa booth. I know Dustin. Uh, Dustin had an interview with one of the uh, Daiwa guys, so I know he's got mm -hmm. something coming out um, in regards to some of the stuff they released, both freshwater and saltwater. Um, but the Shimano stuff, I did walk through. I looked at the reels. Um, I did see those baits or an image of that bait um, somewhere, but I didn't really get a chance to look at it. So, so this bait right here, it, what caught my eye, I saw a video of it swimming in the water. It has a blade inside that flashes back and forth. And when it hits like the sunlight, I guess, or something, it just makes like this crazy flash and it just swings in there as you're twitching it. And I saw that. I was like, man, that looks good. Yeah. I that think is, I heard somebody talk about that. That yeah. is pretty badass. I can't yeah. remember what they called it though. I can't remember either, but one of the other products I saw thought it was cool. And then, of course, they got their new reels, the next have. I think they re redesigned that one. That's one of their lower models, I believe. And then the Nasi, it's a lower model. Where do and they come up with these names? I don't know. Sustain is the only one. I'm like, oh, that's a word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if they're these reels are replacing, like, their current models or not. I'm sure the other ones have meanings, but, like, you know, like – I'm Colorado. sure eventually it, it'll it'll replace some of the older ones. Yeah, know, like I knew they run out. Yeah, they they came out with the Vanguard last year, the year before, and that replaced the Stratic. Uh, yeah, CI4, right. I think. Mm -hmm. Did it so, really? Yeah. So they don't make the Stratic CI4 anymore. No, I don't really? think so. I should have gotten a couple, man. That was like the <laughs> tried and true spinning reel of everybody's yeah. choice. Well, get a Vanguard, man. It's pretty much the same thing, I think. Nah. Shimano's too <laughs> expensive for my taste. Oh, dude, they are, but I'm totally oh kidding. Gosh, they're dude. amazing. They're, they are expensive. I'm not going to lie. They're amazing, though. So I actually got the freshwater Stratic. I'll tell you what, though. I did get to have a pitch contest. Remember when we did it with Nate and um, the dudes from Strictly Sale? Yeah. And I think it was Nate had his uh, Corrado DC out there. And I loved I was like, dude, I'm good at pitching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that reel was amazing man it was dude i was like dude i was like that's awesome i was like because i've always sucked at it right like when we done the contest with me and my buddies like my buddy nate used to we used to try to do it and yeah. i'm like ah i'm awful at it and um that day we we took we brian i don't know if you you've probably seen people do it we had a little like float like a little circle float that we threw out in, in the demo pool. And that's yep. what we oh, yeah, yeah. let it float around in there. And we were having contests and well, I've seen, yeah. I've seen guys take like the cornhole, like bag sets, you know, and like try yeah. to pitch it in the hole in the, in the board. Yeah. 
Uh, I've seen that before it. too. But yeah, I've seen the float thing too, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> that reminds me, did you guys see Aaron Steiger's video a few weeks ago of him sitting in this, <laughs> this chair in his yard flipping? Yeah. Yeah. Flipping <laughs> flipping the things in his yard. Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It's kind of a good idea though that he's yeah. doing it seated yeah. because you think about it, like if you can start flipping while you're seated and kayaking, like how how low you can keep those, you know what I mean? Because if you're yeah. standing you think about it, it's a, it's kind of a weird angle to be trying to flip up underneath something. And if you're low, but that dude's like, he's tiny, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. like we're going to be realistic here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, yeah. That's no, I still get flipping. So I, I don't even do it. It's whatever, but I don't know, man. That's, I got, I got all these DC reels, Brian, but I don't, I don't flip. Dude, Dude, I see what they're made for, man. Like, hey. that's why DC reels were made was almost specifically to be able to pitch and flip and that kind of stuff. No, right, I, I agree, you know man. Way? But they're just so smooth and they feel so good. And I just, oh, I'm sure they do. Oh. I like the sound of them. Yeah, that's the other reason I bought it. <laughs> you love the sound. You're just like, Zzz. it's awesome. But, Man, that's that's all the products I saw that piqued my interest. I don't know if you had anything else, Josh, but mm. no, because we went over the gilly. That won the best of show, right? Yep. Yeah, for uh, lure showcase. Yeah, I think that was uh, the best of show. So they got like categories. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who won combo? Does anybody know? Best combo of the year? Lose was killing it forever, man. I was wondering if they did it again this year. I don't know. Uh, that I couldn't tell you. I know the list is on uh, on the ICAST website, I believe. Yeah. Let's uh, see if I can. There's, or... there's a lose combo that I'm still like, I still want to get like two of them. Um, is that, that the. I don't know. It's got a blackout. It, you're it's talking the blackout? blackout? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That thing. My, my buddy has one and he loves it. Like, he's like, it's just for 280 bucks or whatever it is, real and rod. Like, he's like, it's just great. And then, okay. I so I found the list here. Best electronics was Hummingbird Mega live. Mm -hmm. uh, Freshwater Reel was uh, Daiwa Zillion. Yeah, Zillion. Yeah. Um, the Dawa Zillin. Oh, Zillian. here you go. Best rod and reel combo. Uh, Abu Garcia. Veritas. Oh, the Veritas. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Titus Dominguez. That helps us out with the, the trail series. He mm -hmm. loves those things, man. Yeah. Oh, here's another. Uh, here, here's the other one I, I uh, saw. Freshwater lure. Um, Strike King chick magnet. It's a flat sided crankbait. I didn't it had, see that. The chick magnet? Did? I like it. Yeah, it's called the chick magnet. Uh, I think the bill is made of uh, that board you were talking about, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was. What's that stuff called again, Brian? You remember? Chipboard. Board? Chipboard, I want to say. It's like Chipboard, what they yeah. use in, in computer, like building computer stuff, I think. Oh, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, that, like chipboard. it's flexible plastic. I've heard that stuff is great. Like, um, but. Yeah, you know, uh, best best boat and watercraft. Uh, he, uh, you can talk about this because you got a picture of it. It was the boat Lono Arrow, dude. That thing. Uh, I tell you what. So I walked out by the uh, the demo area um, Tuesday after we were pretty much wrapped up setting up our booth, um, which was a hot, sweaty mess, dude. Florida in July is the worst, dude. You would walk outside and like instantly sweat. Um, it was hot and humid. But anyways, I walked out there um, and I saw it um, docked up by the dock there. EJ was out there in his Apex watercraft um, rolling around the lake fishing and whatnot. Um, so we were checking that out. But um, that boat, um, B-O-T-E, caught my eye because I'm like, they put a pedal drive in an inflatable? Like, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? And I saw a couple people uh, pedal it out and pedal it around. Dude, it, 
it was cruising along like any normal kayak looks super comfortable um i didn't sit in it i didn't try it out so i couldn't really give you like the full nine yards on it but mm -hmm. from what i saw man mm -hmm. and from a couple of the people i talked to i think john graves even tried it out um, i'm not and, surprised <laughs> and said it was pretty cool man um you know for something that could deflate and throw in a bag in the back seat of a normal car and then put a, a pedal drive in it I thought it was pretty cool, man. Like I know a lot of folks in the kayak industry are like, you know, it's an inflatable, it's not a rotor motor boat and <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But dude, yeah. for what that is, like it's on the screen right now, that thing is pretty BA for what it, it does is. look cool. I don't know what the price point is on it. And I know somebody asked me and I, I didn't look or I didn't ask what the price point on it was. Um, but for what it was, dude, I could see that being utilized for those folks that can't roof rack it, yeah. get a trailer. Mm -hmm. Maybe you live in an apartment and you can't, like, instead of lugging a kayak up three flights of stairs to throw on your balcony <laughs> in your apartment. like I've done that. This is a great option. Like, I thought it was cool um, for what it was. And uh, I think Hoover was even talking about that, too. And a few other people man like for what that thing is it's pretty cool um i'm not gonna lie um i i was a huge fan of it i thought there was a lot of genius ingenuity into that thing um but again i don't know what the price point is on it mm -hmm. um but for those instances that i stated you know you know live in an apartment don't have the storage can't tow roof rack you know truck bed whatever like being able to throw that in the back seat of like a a honda civic or a, a dodge dart or something like mm -hmm. that that's pretty cool uh in my book so oh yeah, yeah. and dude i from <laughs> what i saw come from them like as in regards to the paddle boards that we saw down um at the marina down at dale hollow yeah eastport yeah yeah eastport had that one a couple of them i was like dude that's sweet man i was like that yeah i hadn't heard of the company until i saw those paddle boards that he was mm. carrying down there and I'm like, those things are sharp. They look good. Like, they look tough, like durable. Like, you know, like that's the thing you hear inflatable. You're like, oh man, like I'm gonna rip that thing apart. But I'm like, dude, that's that's heavy duty stuff. Like, no yeah. Joke. At, at right time, um, we sell a lot of paddle boards. Um, we used to sell a lot of like the hard boards um, that were either made of foam, wood, or fiberglass. <laughs> But um, so many people have um, gone to the inflatable ones, mm -hmm. um, which is super cool. I mean, they're super compact, lightweight um, in that material. Like NRS makes an inflatable stand-up board, paddle board, mm -hmm. too. Um, in the, and we sell a lot of those. Um, and there's a couple other companies. We don't mm -hmm. sell boat, but um, that material that they use, man, like, you could literally whack that thing with some treble hooks and you're not putting a hole in it. That's how yeah. durable it is. Yeah. Um, that, that material <laughs> that they use nowadays is lightweight and it's super durable. Yeah. This whole pedal drive version of it, dude, it's a, it's a wonderful idea for those people who don't, you know, cause you think about it, man. when you're like, all right, I'm switching pedal drive. Oh dude, I'm going to transport this, you know, like, yeah, where, where am I going to keep this thing? Like, you know, it's, insanity and this thing comes in a bag so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like you don't have to worry about any of that man like the next time i hear somebody be like hey i need a kayak and i don't have a you know trailer and i don't know if i can rooftop it i'm gonna be like buy a boat yeah, <laughs> You're <gonna be> yeah. <laughs> that would be b-o-t-e right it's a good name <laughs> I, I, somebody also commented on that post I put up on the on the Facebook page. They're like, they should win an award for most genius like company name ever or something. And like, really, you can't argue that. I mean, yeah. it's pretty genius boat. I mean, did uh, did you see my comment on that post? I did not. No, <laughs> it wasn't a knock towards the company or anything. I said the Woody Wagon of kayaks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that I did see. That I did see. Um, yeah, because it's got that like wood grain pattern on the outside, yeah. which is uh, which is super cool, man. Um, I just like, I like the look it. of it, man. And it it like I said, dude, 
from the f- people that I saw peddling that thing in the in the demo pond or whatever you want to call it, um, that thing cruised along pretty good, dude. And it wasn't like people were like, you know, huffing it. And um, it, it, dude, I'm telling you, man, for what I saw, from what I saw, it it was a pretty slick setup. I will say that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. In, I'm, I'm interested in seeing somebody with one eventually. So. Well, guys. Um, yeah, man. The one other thing I'll tell mm-hmm. you uh, that I saw that it was hard to put in words, um, and I did post it, and I think I talked to Josh about it. Um, it's made by Liquid Products, and it's this little tackle storage bag um, they call the Sidekick. A um, couple interesting things about it, um, and I have a podcast scheduled with them. I think it's like the 19th um and we're going to talk about this but this uh it floats um it's got internal hard storage so if you got like a bunch of crankbaits they all hang um hmm. uh what would it be vertically um in there there's uh room for i think it's 3600 boxes there's some pouch bags in slide out spots for plano boxes so it floats, but not only that, what I think is going to be cool for the kayak guys, um, when the lid is closed and zipped up, I'm a big dude, right? I'm like 260 pounds. Mm-hmm. You can stand on it. You could throw really? that in the front of your kayak and sight fish. That's crazy. And it floats. So, for instance, our good friend, John Graves, who just flipped his kayak and lost all his gear, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, because okay. it would have floated and uh you know they're trying to market it towards kayak anglers uh co-anglers on the boat side uh some bank fishermen and things like that because you can carry it like a like a regular bag or a strap like a duffel bag um real cool product so we're going to have them on to talk about some of their stuff i've used some of their stuff in the past for uh big crankbaits walleye fishing um, for that vertical storage. So instead of in a 3,700 boxes, when all the hooks get tangled and you're, you know, swearing mm-hmm. under the sun, trying to unhook that crap so you can tie it on. Um, each crank bit has its individual storage compartment. Like I said, it that's hangs cool. from that back treble hook. Um, so yeah. that's something cool too, that I saw. And then, uh, uh, one other thing was, uh, the sunglasses, the Baggio sunglasses that I posted, I know they're going to come up on a podcast with you guys. I, I got to get you guys that info because you guys have been wanting to talk about sunglasses. But yep. the guys that started that company are the guys that used to work for Costa and got them to where they're at. So they left there and they started their own sunglass brand. Nice. Um, <clears throat> super comfortable. Lenses are cool. And then they have this uh, special lens. It's like pink rose. Um, and what it does for clarity is pretty badass. So mm. I know you guys will dig that. So I got to get yeah. you guys that contact info. So a lot of cool stuff, man. I know, uh, I made a lot of contacts down there for all of us as far as, uh, podcast shows and stuff. And I got quite a few for you guys. So, uh, um, yeah, we'll, uh, it. we'll keep pumping out the content from, uh, the remainders of iCast. <laughs> I know. Yeah, J- me and Josh at the beginning of the episode, we were talking about like, oh, one of these days we're going to make it down there. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah we'll talk about that off the air. Uh, but, yeah. We're getting fired. No. <laughs> All right, we're starting a petition. Uh, we need 10,000 signatures sent to Brian Schiller that he will not fire the final cast. I wouldn't <laughs> fire you guys, even if you tried to quit. <laughs> what the heck? Catch me outside. Make sense. Catch me what outside. I, what if I make? I, w- I wouldn't fire you even if you tried to quit. <laughs> Brian, Brian's that guy. You're like, hey man, I think I'm gonna quit. And before you could get the word quit, I was like, screw it, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> what? what well, if I was I gonna fire world- you anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if I made the world's most impolitically correct Facebook post of all time? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you've been known to toss a couple every year, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but not bad ones. I mean, you know, it's Josh might have to lash you a few times with a wet noodle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's end this, man. We don't All have right. enough to talk about. Well, take us out then, Brad Hicks. Yeah, Brad Hicks. All right, Why guys. Hicks. 
Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh, talking about iCast products. Even though you might have seen them all yourself, we're talking about them again. So, uh, that's what we yeah. do. It's all good. The repeat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Later. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.